Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Second Cup of Coffee. Pastor Tom here with you. We're on week four of our series called Identity, and we're having a wonderful conversation that's about to start with Brianna Argetta. Uh, she heads um, with her husband, Josh, the uh, high five department at our church, and uh, they have two kids. And I asked her, it, this kind of spawned out of a conversation we were having. Um, I don't even remember where we were, but um, I was like, hey, do you want to do this? And she's like, sure. <laughs> so, um, all right, Brie, we're just going to start with um, okay. this. Uh, I don't know how to phrase it, but this, um, and I don't think it's, it's a belief that you have, but I don't think it's a wrong belief. I think it's a God-given belief. It's, it's a phrase that she says, and if you're around her, she doesn't say it all the time, but you hear it. She's like, I'm God's favorite. But there's this confidence in it. It's not a cockiness. It's not an arrogance. It's not a like an exclusive club. It's me and Jesus. Like anybody can be God's favorite, but I'm God's favorite. And, you know, I'm going to walk in that. Mm -hmm. So is that fair to say? That's very true. Okay. So the reason I wanted to talk to her about that based on what we've been talking about on identity is if you can walk in the identity that God has favor on your life, I think it opens doors that may not open to you otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, not that he doesn't want to open them, but there's a little bit of maybe unbelief in me. And so she exemplifies it. She has some crazy uh, testimonies and things that have gone on in, in her life. And so um, Brie, where did that come from? I mean, where did that, um, I don't want to just say it's just a belief, but there's like confidence. Where did that come from? Where did it start? How did you yeah. get to that? So that started um, ever since I was younger. It was kind of implemented into me. And so growing up, my parents, anytime anything God related would happen, first of all, they would call it out for what it is. Oh, that's from God. You answered, mm. that prayer was answered. That's from God. You have the favor of the Lord. You are God's favorite. And so everything, like they, they taught me to to see the blessings all around me and, and to just claim it. Like, you know what? Yeah, I'm God's favorite. When I pray, something's going to happen. God's provision is all around me because I'm God's favorite. I'm a child of God. And so they all always told me. So it was never, it was never a doubt. It was never something that I was unsure of. It was something that it was told to me so often that I believed it. Mm. Um, and so I, I began to prophesy that into my life as well, because everyone else told me, I'm like, you're right. I am God's favorite. <laughs> and so things would happen. And it just kind of shaped how I viewed my relationship with the Lord. Um, because I'd be like, I am God's favorite. I am a child of God. So I don't have to worry. I know that he has his best for me. I know that whatever it is that I can, I can trust God in all circumstances. Mm, mm. Um, but something I had to learn with that is that being God's favorite, um, being a child of the Lord, when you pray, it, it's, it's still his, his provision when I pray and he says, no, mm, that's just as much mm. favor as when he says, yes, his nose, his weights, his, his yeses, they're all part of me being his favorite. He loves me so much that he can tell me no, that he can tell me yes, that he can tell me not right now. And so mm. because I was so grounded on he has the best for me because I'm his favorite, because I'm his child, I, I didn't worry as much when I was unsure about circumstances or when he would close the door, I'd be like, well, he closed that door because he loves me enough to open up a different one. And I just wow. don't understand it yet. That That's... See, I've never heard that part of it. So that's really good because it's rooted not just in I'm God's favorite, but which is wonderful, but it's rooted in a trust and a relationship, yes. which I think is so key because sometimes it is no or sometimes yeah. it's wait <laughs> or sometimes there's a distance between when I pray and, and, and when it happens. I will say this, Sabrina, I think it's important. She doesn't subscribe to I'm God's favorite. He's just going to do it. She's one of the hardest workers I've ever met. She graduated high school early. She's already got a master's degree. She already runs a department at a school. She's very accomplished. And because she works, she puts the work in. She doesn't just say, hey, I mean, she's very, in, in a good way, goal oriented. And she works at what, what she feels like God is calling her to. So it's not some, uh, and maybe you can speak to the spirit. It's not just some Lord, of, uh, how I call maybe uh, pixie dust. Like, I'm just going to mm -hmm. say I'm God's favorite and he's just going to do it, right? There is an element, and let's talk about it maybe this way. When it's a no, or no, when it's a wait, there's a work involved with the wait because from when I ask to when it comes, there's a road in between that I either choose to walk or I don't, and that's work. Can you kind of maybe walk people through what that looks like a little bit, like, how do you stay convicted in your, um, or stay grounded in your conviction that you're God's favorite, even when you may be not getting answers or it's not real clear? Yes. Is that difficult? How do you do that? It is. And so there's a few things that I have to remind myself. And one of them is being um, that I can't make my own provision. 
So it's mm. one thing to be wise, which we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be wise stewards. And so I, I do what I can on my side, but I cannot make my own provision. And so the rest is literally up to God. So wow. I have to remind myself, like, there's nothing more that I can do in certain circumstances. I can only bring myself so far. So the rest has to be up to God. Why? Why worry? Why freak out? Why do this when I cannot open a certain job door? I cannot open a certain mm. ministry door or a certain family door. Like there's things outside of my control. So I'm going to do what's in my control. But then it's like, okay, God, you have the rest. I've done what you've given me with, with, with the tools you've given me, the giftings you've given me. I've done what I can. Now it's up to you. So I have to remind myself like it's, it's out of my control. Um, so stop trying to control it. Oh, wow. Um, That's good. <laughs> Now, because I think that that control issue is, is a big one. It's hard. <laughs> really hard. Really, really hard. And especially is, I, mean, I think we both fall in the same category. We're kind of type A personalities. Like, yes. here it is. Let's do it. Let's get it done. We'll figure it out. Well, you know, not in a bad way, but um, let's put the pieces in together and let's go. And, but I think I'm learning something about you, Brie, that I didn't really fully appreciate, but I'm beginning it just in this conversation to appreciate your groundedness in who he is to you and who you are to him. Um, it seems like really gives you a peace, like even yeah. when things aren't maybe necessarily. Yes. Um, she kind of, at least to me, she kind of comes across as a little bit unflappable. Now, I, I obviously I don't see her 24 hours a day, seven days a week or whatever, but there is a, I would say a calmness to you, you know, um, in the sense that I think it comes out of that trust that you have with him. And was that just because of it being ingrained in you in a good way by your parents or has it grown in other ways? I mean, you're an adult now, yeah. you're married, <laughs> you have two kids, you have a life, you have a career, all of those things. Can you talk about how how it's grown a little bit after your parents had the influence that they yeah. did? Yeah. So again, um, it's a lot of it has to go with me. It starts with me speaking into my soul, speaking into mm. myself. So when I'm praying, it's like, okay, God, thank you because I know that you're going to answer this prayer, however you make it look. It's not a, I know mm. you're going to answer this prayer like this, or it's God, thank you, and I'm 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 trusting you in this situation, even though I'm unsure. So it's it's speaking into those things that are not yet there. Um, but with that, I, I feel like it's just kind of prophesying into what's to come, even though I don't understand it, even though I'm nervous and I'll, but he's never, what I always remind myself, I'm like, yeah, he, he's never failed me. Like mm. I'm here. I've, I, I know it's silly, but I'm like, I've never died before. I've, I've never been this or that. And so I'm like, okay, God, like you have answered all those other prayers. So when, when the hard times come and they do, I, if I'm able to to praise God and to trust him in the good times, then I better be able to praise him and trust him in the bad times. Like mm. that's, he deserves that. Like I'm not here just, just for the good things that that's not what a relationship is. And so I have to remind myself of all the things that he has answered, all the things he has done in my life. And I'm like, okay, if he's, if he's never failed me yet, if I've made it from here to here, then I know I'm going to make it from here to here however that might look like. I don't know if it's going to look like that or <laughs> the timeline. Right. But again, yeah, he's never failed me. I've never had this, that, and that. So I'm like, okay, God, I know that you will take care of me. I don't understand how that looks, but I'm going to trust you. So we've been talking about David and uh, particularly about uh, him going out meeting Goliath. But there was a point where the transition between him and Saul and him receiving the kingdom hadn't completely happened yet. And the guy who anointed David and anointed Saul, Samuel, dies. Mm -hmm. and, and that had to be really difficult, I would think, for David, because it's like the, the only kind of tiebreaker we have here is removed, mm -hmm. and we're not even through this process. And I was just thinking about that while you were talking, because he had to default to, this, is not, this was not get anointed, leave my dad's table and go to the kingdom. This was like was a up, long waiting. up and down and all, like you said, it yeah. was all of this. But he, I think he just like you defaulted to the trust. You've never let me down. You've never failed me. You've never, you know, what you said you would do, you'll do. As a last thing, Brie, for, for the people that are watching, maybe they're in um, a long season. Maybe it's way darker than, than they would like and they believe you know, that God has said something and they believe God is going to do something. Um, but they're just not quite at the other side of it yet. 
Could you just maybe speak um, to them in particular, some type of, of encouragement if you have? Because I know you've walked through some things in your life where it was a little darker than maybe you had wanted, right? Mm -hmm. And you're, you're holding on and you're not just holding on. I think you were, you were, you're walking in the trust in the relationship. Can you speak to them in particular, just um, maybe a little bit of grace just to help get them, maybe even just through today? Because sometimes it's just grace I need for today because, you know, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. So. I think um, part of what can help you move to that, being okay with the waiting and the nose and moving on that transition period is to remind yourself of all the good things that God has done and mm. seeing that he's never failed you. And so I think, I think sometimes we're so stuck in where we're at, what we don't have, that we don't stop to see like, I am standing in my blessing right now. Like this, where I'm standing, I prayed for five years ago, oh, 10 years so ago. <laughs> and maybe it's not where I want to be yet, but like, 10 year old, 20 year old, 30 year old, 40 year old me prayed for this, prayed for me to be mm. in this position. Mm. And now I'm waiting for my, <laughs> so my now to like the prayer I have now to be somewhere else. But I think we need to first recognize where we're at and, and the provision that that is in itself. And then, like I said earlier, if there's a, a closed door, a, a wait or something like that, it's like, okay, God, for one, I'm going to trust you. But for two, why? Like you mm. have the best and just like it, we're talking about identity. If you know who you are, and you, then you know who God is. You know mm. that you're a child of God because your father is, is in heaven and he's the king. Then you can grab a hold of, of that sonship and know that, okay, as a father, there's a father there who's taking care of me. If I'm a child, then I have to let that, I have to submit to mm. my authority, my mm. parent. But my parent is going to do their best to protect me, mm. to to teach me right and wrong, to to guide my way. And um, as a kid, you don't understand that. As a kid, you want all the dessert now. As a kid, you want to go <laughs> play on the dangerous things. But the parent's like, no, because I know you're going to get hurt. I know you're going to throw mm. up or this or that. And so the children don't always understand the process until they're older. Um, and so we have to remind ourselves as if we know who we are in Christ, then we know we have to submit to God's authority, but it's only because he's, his provision is good for us. And we need to just grab a hold of that and, mm. and stand firm. And I don't understand, but that's okay. <laughs> I don't understand, but that's okay is I think uh, words to live by. And also the promise that I, I'm standing in the promise I prayed for yesterday and was I'm waiting for the promise of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm literally standing in the blessing that I prayed for maybe even 10 years ago. That is so rich and so good. If you grab a hold of what she's talking about, identity, trust, walk it out, trust him for what he's already done. Trust him that you're praying from a blessing that you had wanted before, even if you're waiting on another one and that you don't have to have the answers and it's okay because he's a good father. It will take you through this season. So I really appreciate your time. Thank you yes, for your heart. You. It was uh, absolutely rich. If this meant something to you, please share it. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us uh, on our app, or you can find us on YouTube at Rancho Christian Center or at the Second Cup of Coffee. We really appreciate you guys being with us, and we will talk to you soon.